All right, in this video, we are going to go ahead and cover creating a CMA using RPR. I'm Joe Grant with Sell with Joe Grant, brokered by eXp. And I've found that CMAs can be a complicated thing for a lot of agents. They struggle on what should I use, what shouldn't I use. Every MLS is a little bit different. Well, if you're a realtor, not just a real estate agent, but an actual realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors, the RPR tool is one of those tools that comes to us with our membership. So once you open it up, just throw in the address you want right here in the location bar. And I decided I'm gonna use 1209 Woods Edge Circle as our example here. So we got all kinds of different things we can go ahead and do, but we're just gonna scroll right down to create value, create CMA, it's right here. If we need to refine it and stuff, we can do it there. But for the purpose of this, we might be wanting to put a CMA together for a pre-listing package or put a CMA together for a listing presentation or just to have talking points while we're talking to that homeowner. So create CMA and we come in and it's gonna automatically fill up some, with some stuff. So right here, we have a choice between the comparative analysis to build the estimation based on comps or the sales comparison for a more detailed image. But what's cool is we can just say, hey, what's the difference? And it gives you the difference right there. So RPR is built in with all these little bubbles that explain things for you. So the downside is you can't just jump straight to the bottom and create the report. You're gonna to have to go through and convert, confirm everything. And we've got it all right there, everything's, kind of in it, but we're going to come through and confirm. It's like, awesome. This is a single family home, total bass. Awesome. This one says three. Well, it's because it's a two and a half and the system doesn't recognize half. It calls it one full bass and a half. And that's how it got to the total bass of three, the square footage, the building square footage. And if there's anything here, we need to change. Well, garage spaces is actually two. So let's go ahead and change that one. There is no pool and everything looks right. Composite shingles, it's actually asphalt shingles, it's already there. And raised and, the raised and crawled aluminum. Okay, so everything looks pretty much right on spot except for that two car garage. So let's go ahead and confirm facts. All right, now we're gonna search for comps. So this is really simple on this tool all. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you're in a different MLS, we all use this same one. So we wanna look at single family, we want active, pending, active under contract and close. So this right here, it's a little weird. Pending and active under contract in every every area of the country is a little bit different. Pending, all the contingencies have been cleared. Under contract is it's under contract with contingencies. Your specific area may be a little bit different, but that's the generic terminology. So right now, I'm not seeing any dots on here. So I'm actually going to say, hey, let's go ahead and look within the last six months. All right, we can always filter out, but it's kind of hard to come in and add. And we're gonna go three to five, two to three. Square footage is about 20% up and down. All right, we're not worried about that. Okay. so. On the price, we're not going to give it a price range. We just want to know the total dollars. And now we're going to search. And our search results are going to come up right down here at the bottom. So now we've got all the different houses that came into it. So let's see what we have. Now we can straight up add to the comp list, but let's go ahead and show you what, what's going on. We've got the top here to change, added in all our different ones. Here's the different colors for what's going on for sale, pending sales, distressed properties, it fills it all in. Now, these starred ones are the ones that are being recommended in the RVR, that's the recommended value. So for this guy right here, if we look, this is not even a 10th of a mile away. So we're gonna add that to the comp. We'll add this guy to the comp. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the beds and baths. It's like, yeah, it's one less bedroom. It's one more bathroom, but remember, our PR doesn't do half bath. So three bathroom could be two and a half. And if we look at the square footage, it's just about off. This one's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and, hey, this guy right here, it's in the same range, but we notice that this, actually we're gonna take this guy out because if you notice this is not a detached. Now it makes me wonder if I can come back up and the other one we've already gone through and make sure that we're only looking at detached homes. 
All right. There's another one with a two car garage. That's single story. So now we can go ahead. It's like, all right, so this one was closed. That one's closed. That one's closed. So we've got three closed comps in here. Um, but let's add in some lower priced ones as well, just because we don't know the condition of the home yet. We haven't seen it. Maybe we saw that it said foreclosure. Maybe it's in bad condition. We don't know. We don't want to make assumptions. All right. And all of these are closed. But as we keep scrolling down, it's going to shift into our actives. So this guy right here is active 1,800 square feet, but it's a 2077. This is a brand new build, so we really don't want to add that one in. All right, we got 22, 22, and our target house is a 2002. So here's a 2006. Let's add that guy in, and here's a couple in their pendings. Now this guy right here, we probably don't want to add that guy in. Looking at the age, that's probably not in the best shape and skew us quite a bit. Here's a brand new listing. It's almost a mile away. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these in just to go ahead and help us out and move it forward. All right. So we're going to update valuation and close. And now we're going to create the report. So we're actually going to create the seller report because that's what we're doing. But you can do a property report, seller report, flyers, mini report. There's so many different things you can do in here. Um, those are videos for another day. <clears throat> but you'll notice that this thing is going to be 81 pages long. We're not going to want all that. What I could have done ahead of time is open up this customization section and taking a bunch of these pages out but since this is a video to show you what this does i'm not going to take them out just yet um, a few things that i take out i have my own custom net sheet that i do um, on the recent on the pending solds i like having that market activity stuff in here and a lot of these things are going to be the property history the property photos and when you come into them you can see when you hover over the eye what that picture is. So what you'll want to do is you're going to want to draft one of these yourself and then say, okay, this is what I want and this is what I don't want in it and customize it a little bit to your style and how you're going to talk to your client. All right, so the cool thing is, is once you set up RPR, it's going to put all your information in there. So boom. Joe Grant, brokered by EXP. So with Joe Grant, that's who I am. Awesome. So it's already got a nice, beautiful cover page. It's already made up for you with the homeowner's house right there on it. All right. So here's the quick fact sheet on it. And this is one thing I really like. I'm not a big fan of this number here, but I am a big fan of this right there. Hey, your comp analysis shows that your home price is roughly here. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, so this report is going to show that a fair market value range would be here. And we're going to go into it here on why. Now, these, this price may be lower, may be higher based off of what you've done to the house. We haven't quite toured it yet. And we'll go over that in just a second. All right. Now, some of the things that you're going to want to take out, it's like the fact sheet here. We don't need it. They already know what it is. All right. We don't need that page. All right. This one right here is the livability score. They're not going to need that. Here's the photos of the house itself. We don't need all of those for their house. But this page right here, which is the property value history, shows it to you. So all these pages are different. The seller report here is one thing that most sellers want to see. It's the how their value of their house has gone up. This is the assessed value of it. All right. But you'll notice some of these pages, it's just a lot of wasted space. It's great for a digital report or if something you're going to chop up and use like in media the seller report difference. This is list price versus sales price, adjusted price adjustments. And this is what's literally going on in my current market right now, all right? This is your health comparison. You can see that in Suffolk, we were down in January 22 to current, we are still creeping up. So while 
everybody asks about the housing market, you can show them right here with the statistics, right on simple graphs that anybody can understand that, well, in Suffolk, in your specific zip code, we are trending up and we're still continuing to trend up. And they can see the median sales price and sales volume, same thing. It The market's cyclical. It goes up, it goes down, but we can still see that it's trending up. But the volume of houses is going down. And as there's less inventory out there, it causes prices to continue to go up, which can be part of your selling thing for anybody who wants to wait six to 12 months. Well, if your house is going to be worth $40,000 less next year, is that something you would be okay with? Not all of these pages you're going to want to go through, uh, but some of them your style may want. Medium house to list volume, not one that I'm a fan of, but I keep it in there because of the inventory, single family inventory that's out there. All right. So each one of these is a little bit different and everything here is geared towards the seller. Now, here's the comp map, and this is what we really want. It shows us, hey, here's our target house and here's where the comps are that we're using. Here's a quick write up on it. So this page is great because it shows the prices right there on what was closed against our target house. It shows us the square footage. It shows us the year built and everything's right there. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, as you can see right here, this is your house compared to the, the houses that just recently sold. As you can see, here's the differences on size, age. You can see with and the write up here is irrelevant because that's just the marketing copy that we write. On this page, you're going to see the active and pending properties that are here. So this is what we're competing against. This is what's currently selling. So as you saw on the previous page, flip back, while these houses sold and in the, the low 300s, with the exception of this one outlier at 340, you can see that the ones that are pending are down with this one exception. I and mean, you can flip back to the map and show them where they're at. But here's the cool thing. Now, I like these pages and I keep this page in here just to show them. But what you can do, and it's ultimately up to you, is pick out the one or two that you think best meet it. Here's the recent market activity page. But what you're going to really like that RPR generates for you is if you know you've got a seller, and I know I'm scrolling through this quick, that's going to balk about where to position their house on price trying to get down to it, you're going to see there's a section in here where it gives you the internals of the actives. And we're still on the close because I checked too many closed properties. I guess this one is not giving it to me. So here's the seller's net sheet where we can actually fill in all of their information on there. Um, one of the things I try to do, maybe I do it through my MLS or it's on a different one here. On these ones, it'll actually give me interior pictures. So I, here's even the expires that went into it. But you show them that house with the interior and then you compare their house's interior with that house's interior to see how things work. But that's how to create a seller's report or a CMA inside RPR. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to help. You have a great day. I'm Joe Grant with Sell with Joe Grant, brokered by eXp.